Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today we're going to be doing a video of using some pigment inks and some colored pencils and making a design. And before I get started, I want to share a haul with you. And before that, I want to share this. It was a gift I got from one of my friends, Sheila, and she knows I'm a fan of bird stamps. And I don't know if you can see that because of the glare, but I'm very excited about this magazine and especially these birdies because I'm a fan of birdies, as you know. And I'm looking forward to doing that. But first, I want to share with you my haul. The weather in our area has not been good, and because of that, I've been shopping. And my first destination was Rubberneckers. I love this bird with the, the um, little berries in its mouth. And one of the things about Rubberneckers is they make super, really great red rubber backgrounds. And I have almost all of their flowers, but I didn't have the daisies. And it's a big background. I think it's probably the uh, five and a half by four and a quarter, but it might be b bigger than that. Let's get the ruler and figure it out for sure. Probably says on here somewhere, but we're going to tell you for sure. It's five and a half by almost, yeah, four and a quarter. Nope, a little bit more than four and a quarter, about four and three eighths. Isn't it cool? They have the greatest stamp. I'll be making um, a card with one of these in the next video. Then this one, the floral circle, is just gorgeous. Look at the detail in those flowers. And let me tell you the size of it. Again, it's a background. It's four inches across, so it's making basically your whole card for you. And again, that was called floral circle, in case I didn't tell you. And then, of course, I have a favorite. And here it is. I'm going to turn it sideways so you can really see how beautiful it is. It's called Poppy's Background. Of course it's called Poppy's Background. This is the one I'm going to be doing first. And it's bigger. It's five and three quarters by four and almost four and a half just a notch below four and a half so that's going to be the next one i make in a card so you can stay tuned for that but today's card i'm using two old stampin up sets one that's called hello there i already used that it's um I bought it specifically for the hello there that was on it and of course I already got a little smudge there but I thought I would show you how to get rid of that at some point in the in the card so that it'll be gone and the other set I'm using is called Madison Avenue and it has these um, little I'm gonna call them quatrefoils I'm making that word up for those of you who are wondering what what I'm saying I don't know I'm just saying I think that's what it's called and then it has this teeny little center one and then it has one that has four of the I don't know if you can see that in video four of these and I've masked off one of them so when I ink that one will not show in the ink and I'm going to use my new uh, color box cat size that I bought I really like these I've been playing with them I've already made one card that's drying I'll show it to you anyway it has a piece that will attach to the to the center that'll eliminate all of this but that's what it looks like right now and it's got diamond glaze all over it so it's really going to be shiny and beautiful at some point in its life but right now it's not it's just wet so i'm going to be using today the two colors i like are this plumeria which is a purple and black cherry oh i'm also using butter butter who doesn't love butter when you do this masking what you do is you put the mask on the one piece that you don't want inked like that then you ink the rest I'm gonna do it again so you can just so you can see it then you ink the rest of it and I like these because of this holding on to it thing I don't know if you're supposed to do it this way but that's how I'm doing it I'm just holding on to it and going across the top like that pull that off and then close your misty or whatever stamping tool you're using and then we're gonna just push it down that way it makes your stamp go a lot further because you could decide you know do you want it to be three or four or two or one so I'm going to ink it one more time without putting the mask on it 
to make it really bold on craft cardstock, what you have to do is you have to ink it several times. That's because it sinks in. It really, this paper really absorbs the ink. It's the nature of the cardstock I'm using. It came from a, a, a set of folded cards, and I don't have them with me right now, but I think I got them at Joann's. Anyway, long story short, uh, the craft cardstock will absorb the ink. The other day I was really complaining about the everybody calling it craft cardstock. I said, why don't they call it paper bag brown? It was really bugging me and I was whining about it. So I was on the internet on my email and I got a note from uh, one of the craft stores that said, oh, we're having a sale, and they showed some cardstock, and one of the colors they showed was a brown color. So I clicked on it, and what did they call it? Paper bag brown. I laughed so hard. I've never heard anybody call it paper bag brown, so I just want to say for the record, I think it was Lawn Fawn. Good for you, Lawn Fawn. You finally have come up with a name that I can relate to. Now I cleaned it off because I'm going to change colors. I'm also going to change the width of of how many of these little I'm calling them quadrifoils. I don't know what they're called. I'm going to go to two, and I'm going to change my position on my card or on my. Um, this is a big long strip of post-it note paper, so it'll just stick there. But um, I had to change the position because you don't want that purpley piece to be over here or anywhere near your stamped image or you're going to end up having it um, color your image and you don't want that. The other thing that's nice about using that little piece of, of uh, cardstock like that or um, yeah, post-it note paper like that is that you end up having a really good uh, line on the edge of your paper. If you line it up properly you're going to have a straight edge. I need to um, use my elbow that's word of the wise if you struggle with um, being strong enough to push the door of your misty you might want to do what I do and just use your elbow don't do it hard you don't want to break your misty the thing that takes the longest with this process is cleaning cleaning your stamp and repositioning everything alright I'm going to do all four in this one so what if you're going to really live on the edge you could go ahead and stamp this without doing any kind of um, prep work but I don't like to live on that big of an edge because I know that I can really screw this up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this piece of paper in I'm going to put it right up against that stamped image like that because we want to see where this stamps and what it looks like. So that's what that's what I'm shooting for is I'm going to try to make it that so that we end up with everything in a row. So I'm going to use the fawn. I'm stamping all four colors in fawn. Fawn is kind of a yellowy orange. First thing I realize is I'm too far to the right. So I'm going to have to move my image a little bit. By using that lighter color I think it'll be okay. Nope, that's perfect. This green does not stamp well. Uh, you have to really ink it a lot. Okay, I think our very last color I'm going to do that purple last couple. We're going to do the and red ones. We're going to make them that black cherry color, hopefully. Okay, so that's those. Then I think all we need to do is come up with a plan around the edges. First thing first, let's get our little black mark off. I'm going to use this mono eraser to do that. And you're just going to go over the area gently. You don't want to rip your paper. And the goal here is just to try and clean off as much of it as possible. Okay. That's enough of it. I mean, it's not like it, it, it's not like you're going to stare at it and go, oh, I knew that spot was there. That's gross. 
Then I'm going to use this teeny tiny little uh, stamp. Someone asked me where I got these. They're from close to my heart and they have a little indentation on the side. The only thing I don't like about them is they don't have a grid on them. I don't know if they've changed them since these came out, but I would like it if it had the little grid so I'd know, you know, where where is, you know, where it's stamped in relationship to straight, you know what I mean? Like uh, if, if I knew that there was a line going this way and that way I would know exactly how to center this to make sure it was straight. But these are the things I don't have, so you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna cry about it. I was gonna use this one, but it's way too big for what we need. And what I thought I would do with this little stamp is kind of fill in spots that don't have um, anything around them. Okay, next up we're going to use our colored pencils and let me grab those and we'll be right back. So the pencils I'm using are Marco Renoir's, there they are, and I wanted to show you those because people sometimes ask me what color or what pencils I'm using. I zoomed in as much as I could so that you'd be able to really see the coloring and I'm going to be using one pencil that's a Prismacolor and that's my white because I really like that better than any of the others and I'm going to try to use some colors in here that will kind of um, highlight the colors I've already used. So I'm just going to kind of go around the inner edges of them in little circular motions. I'm going to have Rich fast forward through it. Let me tell you the colors I'm using so you know. Um, just because I know you're going to go, oh, what about these? I'm going to be using 63, which is the green, and 19, and 38, 27, 55, 39, 44, 16, 56, and 79. And hopefully you'll be able to see from the little tags I put on them. I don't know if you've ever noticed that, but I put a swatch on each of mine so I really know what the color is. Because if you look at this, I mean, this is a really good example. If you look at the blue pencil, this is the actual color of it. That's not the color of it. It's this color. So it helps me when I'm doing this to know kind of really where I am color-wise. Adding a couple more, 59 and 37, 31, I lied.
Now I'm going to try and blend them out with um, with a little bit of Gamzol. And I'm going to use a little bit of a couple of these little Q-tips that are made for babies, but I got it at a garage sale really cheap for like a quarter for a huge box of them, and I went with it because what the heck. For a quarter, and I don't care if the tips are big or not. I'm going to do a couple different... I'm, I'm wetting two different ends of it just so in case my... Um, in case my blending changes the color of it, I want to make sure that I don't contaminate my other colors. This is Diamond Glaze. It's made by Judykins. I got a really good bargain on it at a place that was going out of business. It made me really happy. And I try and just do a little dollop in these, and I'm going to move it around with a brush because I don't want to make a big mess on this and it really moves when you do this. You can really make it move you know, up and down, side to side. You want to make sure that you don't... So the way I'm doing it is I'm just going to try and do a dollop top and bottom, side to side and that way I won't have as big a mess. I like to put a lot of this on and if you're one of those people like me that likes to put a lot on, you have to be careful because it'll it'll spread. And if you don't want it to spread a ton, you have to kind of watch what you're doing with it. Alright, so I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take my pokey tool, I think, and well, I'll just take one of these little micro brushes, that'll work. While it's really, really super wet is when you want to do this because if you do it when it's um, set up at all it won't it'll leave big marks in it so you want to make sure that if you're going to move some of it like this you have to do it right after you do the initial dripping So let's let this dry, and then we'll be done. So there's our card. It's nice and dry, and then I stamped the envelope with some matching colors. I think it looks pretty frisky. I hope you enjoyed this, that you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell one friend about me on social media. You know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.